Hi everyone and welcome to WBEL. Uh, okay, you're maybe wondering why we're not in the standings right now. The thing is that we failed at quality control and neither me or Venta saw that his team was overcast. According to the rules, I would have been in my right to ask to be declared as the victor by default, but since it was an honest mistake, obviously, I offered him to keep the win, but <laughs> Menta said that it was against his scout's honor, which is why you're seeing this screen, and yes, it is the rematch. <laughs> so we are going to uh, see two uh, games of my team uh, today. On my side, I decided to go with uh, Skahal, Shudze, and Naya. On Manta's side, it was Cherries, Glashila, and Slime. So let's see how it went. Alright, so from Numero's side, they, I think this is the team that I actually did predict last week. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the Skahal with the Naya backup is a very strong carry. And Shootselt, you know, like I said, we have seen how strong he can be in the WDEL. Uh, he's just a very good unit and can get some of that lightning uh, benefit there with Skahal. Over on Manta's side, we have the Sharice who's coming out with her LB right now to see how much damage this is going to deal. It's a oh lot of damage. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a lot. But at least uh, Chilze had to heal back, so it's really great. And he still has his uh, courage technically. So now we have Glessy, she's going to buff herself with a Revitalize, so full AP. Uh, next is Naya, what is she going to do? So she's channeling, we have Skull going forward, it's uh, movement up, that's coming. Luckily, Cherries wasn't in range to attack, so she went back buffing. Now we have Shuzold, King Blade going forward, also CT up so he'll be able to play again faster. So it was a reflect uh, on the Naya. And Winged Staff on the Skull, so Slime, what is, it, what is it going to do? HP recovery back. So should they, what he's going to do, it's a uh, pressure hazard and a stop on slime, so he won't be able to heal or revive. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh, so, uh, oh. yep, uh, killing blow with courage removal, it's not good for me. But Naya's going to the rescue and channel what I believe that is a uh, full life. And that is weird, Cherry is still not in range, that's odd. Uh, so she buffed again. But Skull, oh, yeah. he's in range. Counter. Another oh counter. My gosh. Yes, I was like, oh no, I'm going to lose this on the spot. But still, <laughs> still the double kill. And then I, <laughs> I forgot about the Shudze. It's going back and I'm, I'm full of hope again. And there's Glassy that's uh, going to remove that uh, re race from Skull. It's really bad. Naya's going next. There's Chuzi that's doing really, really little damage on that Glassy, so I'm starting to worry again because Anaya was really close to Skull to heal him. At least Skull uh, step out of the way. A flare co coming from Skull. Big damage on that monster unit, but not enough to kill her, unfortunately. Stalling Spear kills everyone, at least. <laughs> Keskal did that in his race. And at this moment, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to win, unless there's that stupid reflex again. So, we've seen it once. Oh. And Thunder, and I time. got the win. <laughs> um, wow. Well, I got lucky because uh, I had the opportunity to have a rematch. So, I am grateful to Menta to have accepted to do it. He was a good sport all along, saying that uh, he would love to do this rematch. Uh, I think we get along pretty well. And also, it gave us more content to cover, which is really great. And now he owes me no beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, shout out to Manta. I'm glad, you know, like I said, it's unfortunate that the team was overcosted, but I, uh, at least this way, I get to see another match, and I'm not going to complain yes. about that. So, uh, fun match to watch. Uh, we got to see the power of both uh, Glaciella and Skahal really shine there. Yeah. I think. I think the hits from both units damage capped on every single time they yeah. hit. So, uh, definitely a big slugfest, uh, fun to watch. And like I said, we had stop, we had reflex, we had. It was a high octane match. So, um, yeah, GG's and uh, congrats to Numero for the win. Uh, honestly, I can't pinpoint a uh, key of the match. I will say that first reflex from Glassy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it didn't get him the win, so uh, I don't know. 
yeah, uh, it was a hard one because it was, like I said, it was a very back and forth match. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would have exactly a key of the match either. I mean, like I said, the glassy being able to damage cap and remove uh, re-raise was nice, uh, and the reflex was also nice. <laughs> Uh, I guess, okay, I guess the key of the match would have just been the fact that Skahal was able to hit all three units with that Thunder, uh, Thunderga and mm -hmm. damage cap on all of them. Uh, I mean, that was definitely the swing of the match right there, for sure. Yeah, we also need to give a lot of credit to that Naya with that uh, full life and those Kuragas. It, it allowed uh, Skahal to take another hit. Uh, the fact that she wasn't it, uh, really, I think it was the, the real key of the match. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know what they say, staying alive is the best strategy. <laughs> Alright, so let's jump into the next match. Alright, so here's the real standings of last week. So, uh, in first place, we have Alcor, Macrain, Numero, and Turambar. With one point, we have Greatestness and Moang Man. And with still no points, Johnny B, Manta, Rendell, and Unendured. It's still too soon to make any conclusions, so we'll leave it at that right now. And instead, we're going to watch some epic matches. For this matchup, we have Rindel versus Turambar. On Rindel's side, I'm predicting Flagbearer of Reformed Glaciella, Charisse, and Ramada. With Turambar threatening the Raldor, it's hard to recommend any sort of heavy missile comp coming out from Rindel. That, along with Raldor being able to be paired up with up to two different Lightning Fist units, it's also hard to recommend Perrine as the main carry. That's kind of why I've settled on Glaciella as the main carrier for Rindel's team. Having the wind synergy with Charisse, as well as the spear synergy with Ramada, can allow them to shine with some VCs as well. On Turnbar's side, the team that I'm predicting is basically the team that I laid out. Uh, I'm gonna predict Edward Elric, Raldor, and Mariluke. I think Raldor is key against any sort of missile comp from Rindel, and I think Edward Elric will be able to help out Raldor in that damage department, and also hedge against if Rindel decides to bring Earth. Let's get into the match and see what these players chose. Alright, so we have here Rendell against Turin Bar. So on Rendell's side, we have the Cherries, Ketone, and Halloween Frederica. That's really a funky team, I really want to see this. On the other side, we have Turin Bar with Mary Luke, Raldor, and Edward. So we have a full strike team. Now let's see how it went. So coming out from Rindel's side with the Charisse, up on the hilltop, so she's able to get some nice range damage down the line. One thing that is a little scary is that we both have two Earth units versus the Edward yeah. coming out from Urinbar. And with that being the main damage carry, that's going to be a little scary. But we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, we both, the Catone and Halloween Frederica are both known to have some evasiveness in their kit, so there could be the chance that we're seeing two very highly evasive units coming out from Rindel, which might give him a bit of the edge there. And unfortunately for Rindel, it's another face-to-face, -face, so they won't have uh, many uh, time to buff, uh, especially for luck and evasion. Okay, so first damage coming from Cherry, so we have her Hippel B. Uh, really, really low damage on that Raldor, unfortunately it's his forte. So we have Adamantine, oh wow, so uh, max damage on that Ketone, but she survived because of Courage and now she has the chance to retaliate, so Drain Force on Raldor. Now it's Mary Luke's turn, Search Strike, big damage again. Slow counter from Ketone, doesn't land unfortunately for Rangdale. Now we have Halloween Frederica going next, so she's casting her LB. So I didn't see the word Courage pop up, so I think she might have just lived that off of sheer HP. Oh yeah, that's true now <laughs> that you're saying that. We'll see it on the air, air next turn. Uh, or, oh, not. <laughs> or not. Or not. But she gets to be raised. Yes. <laughs> She's really unkillable. So... Okay, accuracy down. Uh, that that would have been big, but I think that uh, his accuracy is really too high. Okay, so unfortunately for Rendell, I think that's it. another loss. Yeah, I know he does have a guaranteed hit, and I think that might be his guaranteed hit move as well. So even if the accuracy what, or the evasion yeah, was on point, that that probably would have would have done it. Yeah, both units don't have sure hit nullify. Uh, I know that it's a um, kind of uh, missile map because of how it's uh, made with the cliffs, but honestly, it's too small. I think that the missile unit really need. Uh, time to buff to uh, gather speed and 
when your tank don't have time to, to buff properly, they can't sustain enough and it's really disadvantageous to the missile comps. Uh, I think we saw a couple and they all failed so far. Yeah, I think it can be done, but like you said, we've seen almost every match we've uh, seen so far, is we've had the starting positions right across from each other. So if, if it was more of that diagonal setup, I think for the other ground units to be able to get time to get their buffs off of, mm -hmm. uh, get their buffs off, I think that probably would be uh, a good usage for a missile comp. But I think unfortunately for almost every missile comp we've seen, it's been face starting face. right across <laughs> from each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I think the key of the match, of course, was uh, Edward. His uh, only presence uh, <laughs> won in yeah. the, the match. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Edward having the elemental advantage, being a strong unit, and having sure uh, guaranteed hits is it was a hard to overcome for uh, for Randall's team. Even if his team was evasive, it didn't stand a chance against the sure hit. Yeah, it's too bad because uh, his team was uh, really funky. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, we, we saw it on the front screen and we're, we were like, oh man, we, we want to watch this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Hopefully I get to see it again in another week. Yes, of course. Uh, and so GG to both and a uh, nice try, Randall. <laughs> I, I, I think it was really entertaining. Yeah, GG to both and uh, congrats to Terry Bar for the win. Yes. For this matchup, we have Johnny B versus McCrane. On Johnny B's side, I'm predicting Reagan, Miranda, and Murmur. Reagan obviously has the elemental advantage against Sodaly and the infamous Yerma. Miranda has elemental advantage against Pissarro and Regalia Glaciella. And it's a Sword Red Mage team. We know how strong it is, especially this is specific lineup of three Sword Red Mage units. So, I mean, it's hard to really go wrong. From McCrane's side, I'm going to predict Lightning, Galzak, and Whisper. A bit of a strange team, but Lightning's main threat on Johnny B's side would be Summer Lilith. And even then, her being a bow unit means that she's going to be necessarily a little bit more fragile than the rest of the unit. So I think having Lightning as a solo carry should be okay. Whisper can benefit from the Sword Knight VCs with Lightning, and then you can just have the standard Whisper in front, Galzak supporting both Lightning and Whisper, and then Lightning being in the back, being able to dish out serious damage with her follow-ups. So let's get into the match and see what these players chose. All right, so here we have Macrane against Johnny B. So on Macrane's side, we have Zazan, Lightning, and Psaro. On Johnny B's side, we have Reagan, Miranda, and Murmur. So let's see how it went. Interesting team as always coming out from McCrane. Uh, I think we saw the Pissarro Lightning pair up last time around as well. Uh, and it put in some work, so I'm excited to see it put in some work this time around too. Face to face. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got Lightning coming out, putting up her pursuit buff, which is going to be huge. And then from Johnny B's side, we have the Red Mage team. Uh, Reagan, Miranda, Murmur, really strong team. I think a Quite a few people have chosen those three units uh, on their roster. Uh, just goes to show how strong that that team can be. First blood, dispelling trust, not much damage from coming from Miranda. Group buff coming from Zazan, man eater up. That man eater buff is going to really help the pursuit damage coming out from lightning, so that's going to be huge. Yeah, true. And I think that barrage is up because uh, otherwise she would have been able to hit on the first turn. So blinding javelin. Oh, and Reagan, that's a lot of damage. Uh, but uh, at least he had his hill back, about 5k. Murmur, it was a fast cast, so now uh, Regan is going to be faster. It's going again, so he left a couple of units. Now it's Regan's turn. Sonic, I don't know what's the name, I didn't have time to read. So it's LP. Uh, okay, a lot of damage on that lightning. Oh. Yeah, he killed her on the spot. So Merinda's going again, probably another Dispelling Trust. Will she be able to kill? Okay, it seems like a not target, but uh, it only means that uh, McRain is running both eye on Zazan. Strike of room, courage removing on uh, Reagan. No, now it's Zazan's move. Killer cross. Ooh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Reagan felt it. <laughs> <laughs> the Reagan is down, and that is going to be a down. Now it's a two v two, with the elemental advantage over on Johnny B side. And now that's the 2v1. <laughs> <laughs> so Miranda's next, dispelling cross probably, yeah. Kills that Psaro in one shot, and he didn't have this courage. I think it probably got dispelled by Reagan earlier. Yeah, it might not have even had this, because I, I saw him use the evasion buff turn one, and oh, I don't yeah. know if he was in range to deal damage turn two, so he might not have even uh, had the, the time to 
uh, put it on. But That's regardless, another match where they uh, start uh, started uh, one in front of the others. I think we didn't saw much match where the players were starting uh, in diagonal. Uh, there was always a face to face. I don't know why <laughs> everyone liked that spot. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot of very close range matches uh, with people starting right across from each other. Not a lot of buffs happening, but it means the matches get started right away. It's a small map. Uh, for now it's really funny because there's a lot of uh, things that uh, that's happening. Uh, fortunately for us, but unfortunately for your players it's a lot of stress. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, it, it brings up really fast, high octane games. Stressful, yeah. but uh, can be fun to watch. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it was a uh, really quick, really fast match, uh, but it was still pretty close up until the very end there. Yeah. Uh, I definitely could have seen Saro m mounting a comeback, uh, especially if Zazan was able to hold on for one more turn. But uh, unfortunately, that was not the case for McCrane, and I guess fortunately for Johnny B it was. <laughs> yeah, I think the key of the match was uh, Regan killing that uh, lightning uh, very early in the game. Uh, she didn't have time to put a lot of damage. I don't think she even attacked once, I don't remember, but yeah, uh, the fact that uh, his main carry was dead uh, in the beginning really uh, uh, didn't help him at all. Yeah, I definitely agree, lightning going down early was the key of the match. Uh, we saw that the man eater buff got applied from Zazan, so the next attack from her would have definitely put out some serious hurt, but like you said, she didn't get the chance to get off a single attack this match, so that would definitely be the key of the game for me as well. Alright, so a GG to both players was a nice match. Yep, GG to both players. For this matchup, we have Greatestness versus Numero 80. On Greatestness side, I'm going to predict Hyo, Dario Horn, and Murmur. I think Dario could be crucial in a matchup with Numero 80 if he decides to bring an Earth Composition or go all in on his Bradley. And as far as Hyo goes, I think it's one of the more safe DPS that Greatestness can bring in terms of elemental matchups in his roster. On Numero 80's side, I'm going to predict Skahal, Naya, and Shudselt. Skahal and Naya is just an amazing pairing that seems to do well against most of Greatest in this roster. And Shudselt not only fits in the cost, but is a great unit in itself, and it also has the lightning synergy with Skahal. Let's get into the match and see what these competitors brought. Alright, so on my side we have Zazan, Engelbert, and Bradley. On Greatest in this side, we have Cloud, Dario, and Tifa, the FFT team. Oh man. When we were in the lobby, it was like, oh yes, I see a cloud and I have Bradley, so I, I picked the right unit and then <laughs> I saw this. Dario and Tifa was like, oh man, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it was a really, really great fight and you'll see why. Yeah, like I said, from your side, I do like the choice. I like, you have the two tanks out there to absorb the damage for Bradley. So you just let him do his thing. You just let him be Bradley, be that OP unit, and take out the uh, take out the enemy. But from Grayson's side, like you said, he does have the two wind counters. So and one of them being the tank. So let's see how this goes. Uh, Heart of Flutter buff coming out from Dario once again, getting that tank out there to make sure that he's able to absorb that damage first. Engelbert getting the courage up and hate buff. Uh, Zazan popping Oceanic Protection, which. Fire and water um, doesn't help here, but the unit res buff definitely does. And calculated red coming out and taking out the cloud. Yes, that's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> At this wow. moment, I was really uh, like, uh, okay, I just won this fight, but I couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> and you'll see why. <laughs> oh no. Well, like I said, the two wind units against the Bradley is going to be a hard thing to overcome, depending on how high their earth resistance is. Bradley's coming to the fray, <laughs> stacking with the others. It's not quite what I wanted to see. Now Tifa, double hit on Engelbert. Now we have Bradley, what he's going to do. Calculator ran, big chunk of damage on that Tifa. So now we have Zazan, jamming edge, healing power down on that Dario. And now we'll see why Dario is kind of a monster. Draining seal, 4k damage, healing back. So it's going to be a big battle of, of attrition. <laughs> <laughs> basic attack so I, I don't have VP, Tifa doesn't have VP and uh, <laughs> but our basic attacks really hurts like hell. Going <laughs> down uh, applied uh, again, Dario is going to siphon life again. <laughs> oh man it's so unkillable it's 
I was so stressed at this point, I was like, okay, one big IOE and I'm losing this. And the uh, spur damage. Oh, that's big. Yeah, I had some help. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping edge, so finally some damage on that damn Dario. Dario. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, so I have two units with one HP. <laughs> at the very least, it's looking good for me. This is ongoing again. Not even close with that reaction. Radical oh, no. reach, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Not enough damage to kill Dario oh, again, my but my Bradley lap. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was so close. That was so unending. <laughs> Uh, I really was like, okay, one big AoE from Tifa and this game is done. But fortunately for me, uh, the tank did their job and they drained all of uh, her AP. Yeah, Inglefbert held hate for just as long as he needed to. He was, like you said, he did his job perfectly as a tank, allowing Bradley to, once again, like I said at the beginning of the match, do his thing, do his Bradley thing and just dominate the field. Even against win units, he was still able to be a very effective unit as a solo damage dealer. Mm. For me, the key of the match, I think it was Bradley killing Cloud at the beginning of the match before he could do any single bit of damage. And he could have been really good against either uh, Zazan or uh, Engelbert because of all his uh, defense penetration. So yeah, I, I was really blessed with the initial positioning. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you there. Uh, taking out Cloud in the beginning, you saw how much health your units had at the end. Engelbert and Bradley both basically had one health in Zazan's water, so he would have died instantly as well. So him doing any damage on any of your units would have definitely been a huge game changer. So yeah, the initial positioning with Bradley being able to take out Cloud in the beginning, that was key, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's jump into the next match. All right, everybody. In this matchup here, we have Malgan Man versus Alcor. So for Malgan Man's side, I'm predicting an Astrius, Laswell, and Ishtola team comp. Astrius and Laswell have the Katana VC synergy. Laswell doesn't have much fire to worry about aside from the Raldor and Mish over on Alcor's side, and Astrius can help out with that elemental disadvantage, while Ishtola provides the cure, the protect, and the shell from the backline. From Alcor's side, I'm predicting a Raph, Lucia, and Ryu team comp. Raph is a beefy tank that can get out there, soak some damage, and let Lucia and Ryu deal the damage from his side. Lucia doesn't have much ice to worry about aside from the Laswell, and Ryu can leverage off both the dark synergy with Raph as well as the gunner synergy from Lucia. So let's get into the match and see what these players chose. Alright, so from Mohangman's side we have Deldo, Laswell, and Shadowlings. From all colors side we have the Almighty Mish, Barret, and Lucia. So let's see how it goes. This is why I love WBEL. Like, I don't get to see <laughs> Laswell, I don't get to see Mish, I don't get to see Barret. So this, this is going to be a fun match. Um, I'm guessing from over Mohangman's side, uh, probably leveraging that Dark Golem VC with the uh, Ice and Earth synergy. Um, other than that, it looks like they're going for a, a very evasive route. Uh, I saw the buff coming out, and Barret going out with the first hit of the match immediately. Yeah, the fact that they also didn't have time to uh, apply any buff yet, oh man, that was huge. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I know there's the elemental advantage, but... Oh wow, and now the frog! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. That's so funny, but that's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Barret's coming in, probably just a buff, yes, Courage now, Lucia's going, uh, does she have, oh, and she has plenty of AP to work with, uh, but uh, that's still a buff, Ace 2, okay, so we have Mage, another Frog maybe, or uh, Farrega, so Abyssal Mine, okay, so he was even able to hit that Shadowlink Salmon. Unfortunately for a mine man, I <laughs> okay, it's definitely uh, done now. Oh man, that's Lucia. She, she's so damn strong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Frog Laswell. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. Well, uh, that was a fast one. <laughs> 
Whoa. Oh my gosh, how <laughs> much damage was that? 12? That was, tw was 13,000 damage coming out from Mish. What? <laughs> I will repeat again, what even was that match? <laughs> um, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, that was, um, like I said, that was an unfortunate over from Amen's side. Uh, the Diablo not being able to get his buffs online mm -hmm. uh, and being able to be taken out right away. Also unfortunate that the Toad landed. Uh, I don't know, I don't recall, maybe you can help me. If, does Toad reduce the evasion or is it uh, still have the same evasive stats? I don't know. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. But regardless, I think that that I, I have a feeling that, that move from Mish must have been uh, a guaranteed hit. But between that and okay, the yeah, uh, yeah, true. yeah, that and the sharp shot from Lucia, it made it it made it difficult to be able to run an evasive team against this comp. Oh man, uh, the key of the match, of course, uh, was speed. I think uh, the fact that uh, Alcor was able able to go first and to hit uh, Dialdo from afar right from the bat. I, I mean, it was kind of risky because uh, Luchev was really exposed, but man, Alcars was really confident on our damage. Yeah, I have to agree that that speed, being able to outspeed the tank um, and taking him out right away uh, before he is able to, to support Lastwell and Shadow Links at all was uh, very massive. So I, I definitely would give that to put the key of the match as well. Well, this was a uh, really entertaining. Uh, I'm sorry, Mang Man, <laughs> uh, but uh, well, this was a, a great fight. Yeah, yeah, it was unfortunate, but it was still a great fight to watch, and I'm looking forward to seeing more team comps like this in the future. And all card, you just made the thumbnail. <laughs> Should be a frog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In this matchup, we have Manta versus Unhindered. On Manta's side, I'm predicting Flagbear Reform Glaciella, Charisse, and Mish. Bringing Duo Wind into Unhindered's comp is a bit risky because he has two strong ice units in both Snow and McLeod. I think that that risk could be worth it though because of how powerful of a unit Flagbear Reform Glaciella is, and Mish being able to stay in the backline and help deal with a bit of that elemental disadvantage. The duo wind comp, being able to leverage off of those VCs, having Sharice up on the hill, and just flag bear Glashidi as a unit, just sounds like a strong comp that Manta could bring. From Unhindered's side, I'm going with more the merrier, Howlet, and Rain. I think Rain could be a dangerous choice into Manta's Perrine, but I think having a tank along with those two wind units is going to be very necessary because they need to be safe, they're a little squishy, and I think they can put out some serious damage. Uh, running Duo Wind into Manta's team does, also doesn't seem too difficult uh, due to only having one ice unit, and I think that that could just be a strong composition coming out from Unhindered's side. Let's get into the match and see what they chose. All right, so we have Manta against Unhindered. Uh, funny fact, uh, at the beginning of uh, the video, uh, I talked about uh, his illegal formation. Uh, the thing is that he brings it again against Unhindered and ended up uh, winning. Uh, but when I notified him about the, the overcost, he was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I have to redo my match with the Unendured now. <laughs> so, uh, Evan fell on Unendured, so uh, he had another chance to, to win, because I think that uh, Manta has won the first one. So, uh, let's see how this uh, one went. So, on uh, Manta's side, we have the same formation he went uh, with me, so uh, Cherries, uh, Glaciela and Slime. On Unendured side, we have Snow, McLeod, and Dia. So let's see how it went. <laughs> Alright, so from Manta's side, like Numero said, it's the same formation. A little different lineup here. Uh, so it looks like... <laughs> you pop up here. <laughs> uh, then over on, shoot, over on Unhindered side, okay, so we have the Double Ice coming out with Snow and McLeod. Uh, but also with the water, so we have a little bit of that synergy there with both Dark Odin and uh, Dark Shiva. So, don't know if he's leveraging those VCs, but that could be a very strong combination from over on his side. Uh, both sides are not lacking in terms of damage. Uh, some huge powerhouses here, so I'm excited to see what kind of numbers they're able to put up. I think uh, the elemental advantage coming out from Unhindered is going to be pretty strong the ice versus the wind, but let's see how much damage this is going to deal, because I think this will definitely show how the rest of this match is going to go. Not much damage, but 
it was expected since it is uh, an, an elemental advantage, advantage and uh, snow is pretty bulky uh, against physical anyway. So we have Ray Ray's coming from the uh, Nexus, uh, Nexus slime. So we have the Zell back now. Uh, Glaciella has a ton of HP for the rest of the game, it's going to be very dangerous. Uh, so now Cherries, uh, not in range to, uh, to attack. I wonder, uh, is it our LB that uh, really has a, a lot more range than uh, our other attacks? Because uh, it's the second time that the Cherries isn't able to reach from uh, that spot. I think you're. I think it has to be uh, that, or at least the rest of her longer range moves might be turned off to be able to prevent attacking too early. Okay, so Glassy's LB. Okay, it wasn't as big as uh, I thought it would be. Uh, it was uh, pretty great tanking coming from Uninjured. He probably has a lot of AoE resist. So now we have Cherries, another. Oh, okay. So... Oh, I think it wow. was uh, Summer Kill Face sub job. I think so too. Because I saw an axe. Oh, wow. Big LB coming from Snow, uh, stunning that uh, slime. It, it, it could be pretty big. I mean, uh, the fact that Cheriz was dead was ex expected, but that's uh, oh, okay. So it was dead anyway from my cloud. So, it... oh wow! Oh, oh wow! Big damage the coming from uh, Glassy, killing two units, but at least uh, Dia was uh, had a re-raise. But uh, Snow doesn't have his courage now, so if he's going down, he's he's dead for good. So uh, Glassy's again. So Diaz downs, it's, oh now it's a 1v1. Oh, okay, yes, uh, Snow has his ill back, it's going to be huge, and Glass is there. Wow. <laughs> oh, what a match. That was a wild match. Like I said, that one of the things that I, I try to mention it in the middle there, but it's just way too high octane, is that <laughs> because uh, Glassy started off with her LB, uh, which has that elemental chain continuation, yeah. Her next attack was able to deal some massive damage, building off of uh, Charisse's uh, attack as well. So, uh, man, that was just so... Because I thought it was kind of over once I saw the elemental mismatch, but yeah. you never want to count out to Glacio. <laughs> yeah. She's way too good of a unit. Uh, fortunately for uh, Unendured, uh, Evan fell uh, on him. Uh, he was able to win the rematch. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it was a great comp from, uh, coming from uh, him. I would suggest probably to uh, Manta to turn that uh, LB on Cherries off. I think that uh, Cherries will probably benefit from uh, another round of buffing. Yeah, if that's her, the only thing reason why she engaged, especially on small maps like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it might have it might have helped. Uh, yeah, because especially if you wanted to keep her up on that mountain, because she did start to come down towards the end there. Uh, in fact, it might have actually. Uh, on the contrary, been good to turn on all of her longer range moves if she does have other ones, uh, just so that she is able to yes. make sure that she stays up there as well. Yeah, but. there's a buff that gives a plus one range, and also Cherries have a, her um, 25 skill is really big because it gives I think uh, Maniter up to following attacks of allies. I will defer to you on that one. I have no idea, <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds amazing. So, yeah, that, that would have been great to so get that buff off too. Oh man, good luck to find the key of the match. Well, I guess, I mean, like I said, one of the big attacks, I think it was Snow's LB, but the one that took out both uh, Cherise and stunned That's and brought slime, slime to 1 HP. I mean, that was a, a huge turn because it turned a 3v3 into basically a 3v1 where just one another unit had to f deal a final killing blow on Slime. So uh, I guess I'd put that as key of the match just by the virtue of turning it from a 3v3 to a 3v1. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree with you. Well, it was a very exciting last match. I really hope that the uh, next uh, weeks will be uh, as entertaining as this one. I agree. Like I said, small maps, they, they cause the slugfests, so it's a little stressful for the players, but fun to watch. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, so GG's to both players, and uh, congratulations to uh, Uninjured. Yep, GG's. All right, so this is the conclusion of this week for uh, the Blind Division. So the winners, Alcar, myself, Torumbar, Johnny B, and Uninjured. So uh, congrats to all the winners. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't see a win from uh, Manta and Rendell this week. Even if uh, Manta technically has won this first match, that's unfortunate. But at least he, it's how much of a, a great dude he is. And I'm sure that he'll rebound uh, next week. Although, it will be a face-off between Manta and Rendell. So at least one of those two will have a win. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so uh, thank you everyone for participating. So uh, see you next week. And on turn bar side, we have Murray Good. Murray Good. Murray Luke, Raldor, and Edward. So let's see how it went.